So this is the first step, laying out the design, doing all the scale work. Now, after this is set, you can actually expand upon this. Now you can add bumps. You can say, okay, you know what? I think it would look cool if I did a little ridge going this way. So I'll follow like this ridge here. And I'll add some bumps here. You just kind of mark it real quick. And then you can add, but wait for this to dry because nothing will stick to it. But I'm just skipping ahead to show you. Then you just add little tabs on here. Carefully bring it down. surface with, with lines around it but you want more dimension on your scale now I've shown you how to do start to do the raising part so now you want the negative part so I use a big round wire tool and I use different gauges depending on the size of the scales I'll use something like this I'll use something smaller right what you do with this is that you literally go in and scale okay now I'm going to carve I'm going to figure out a center line for all this I can see a center line, it's going to be like all here. So I'm going to avoid that center line. I'm going to just going to carve down around it. So I'll do this. And it's literally simply one stroke. One stroke, one stroke. One stroke, one stroke. So that if you look at it from the side, you're essentially creating a scale that's doing this. You're scooping out the sides. Now when I get something this small I actually switch and I actually just indent it with a, with a tool because it's just, it's just too small. So on these large planes, I'll just indent it. Steve, when you're trying to match the other side, uh -huh. any kind of techniques you use or you just take pictures of? What you've already you can done. take pictures of and flop it. Um, also too, a lot of times, I'll use my hand as a caliper. A lot of times when I block it, I'll use both hands. Right. And I'll sculpt like this. Because there's no better way to do it in the field. Right. So I'll do this, I'll block out, and then if I want to do certain wrinkles, I put my hand on here. I get a sense here. Okay, okay, now I can feel it's going this way. I just kind of mimic that motion and go, okay, the line's going to go like that. And I do this, the line's going to go like that. So you know, for organic stuff, and you can also use a caliper, which, this is your best friend, by the way. Everyone's best friend. This here, you're allowed, if you're doing symmetry, you can say, okay, now this corner of this wrinkle ends here, okay. So it's going to end here, the market. Now I want to get the corner of this from here to here, okay, roughly here. I want to come back and I want to put it right here. You see how everything's already been calibered? Yeah. Well, from here to here, let's say. You go to here, it's been calibered. So this is your best friend. Always use a caliper for everything. So you get to the smaller 
area. It's very hard to get to, so I use a round tool and I just push in. Come back again. And then I'll go in and I'll brush it out. What is that again? Huh? It's 99% uh, alcohol and terpenoid. Yeah, you can buy terpenoid from Michaels. Yeah, any Michaels, any art store, we can order online. And it's 90% to 10% for 80 to 20, depending on your preference. It's only good when you're doing like skin texture and you want that really super fine line going across. Um, what would you do for the texture of the uh, you can, you can, What you can do is you can use a texture pad. Uh -huh. One of the textures sometimes. I even use uh, like one of these brushes. Uh, I'll go and I'll hit it and I kind of carefully oh. brush it. Uh, but generally I find scales don't have textures. Okay. Really, not, not any discernible texture. That's why they're always very glossy. So I never texture my, my scales. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. So anyway, so that. Okay. Now, I wish I could show you more, but I have to go. Um, but uh, there's so much to learn with sculpture. And sculpture is it's actually very technical. Um, the artistic side of it only comes into play in what you create and how you see things. That's why I encourage people to study anatomy, study nature. Okay, animals, muscles, structures, like just do everything you can. Always use reference. Don't go into a sculpture thinking, I'm going to make it up and it's going to be amazing. Unless you're amazing, it's going to be shit, I guarantee you. <laughs> I, I've done enough shit in my career to know. So, always use reference and, and you know, let nature inspire you and try to copy nature. Once you're good at imitating nature, then you can take what actually works in nature and start to create your own creatures. Then you'll create fantasy characters that people look at and say, wow. That looks real, but I know it's not. So it's a process to get there. It takes years, years and years. So don't rush. Get good first, practice, practice, practice. Once you get good, you, you'll get fast automatically. Because then this becomes by the numbers. I just showed you how by the numbers it is. How I use this onto a sculpture is what makes it brilliant. And that's where the art, the art side comes in. This is all technical. Anybody can do this. Just how you use this is what makes you unique. Okay? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for coming. Yeah.